Republican Party Chair Ron Weiser is on the other end of our line, the ambassador. Good morning to you. Good morning, Michael Pat. Let's look uh, real quickly, if we can, just bring people up to date on the latest polls that I'm seeing anyway. They show that uh, on the Republican side, the Attorney General Mike Cox and Congressman Pete Hoekstra are virtually tied. They're a few uh, percentage points apart. Uh, Cox has 26.4 percent, Hoekstra 25.6 percent. That's a, in the margin of error, a dead heat. And uh, six points behind Rick Snyder, one tough nerd, the businessman from Ann Arbor. And then at 11.6%, Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. Below that in single digits is uh, State Senator Tom George from the um, Kalamazoo area. Any reaction to the way that, uh, the, that poll has uh, shaken out? Yeah, we don't know who's the winner's going to be. And yeah. we won't until probably late election night or the next morning. It's going to be really close. At this stage, do you see anybody making a deal? For instance, uh, would uh, would uh, Tom George or Mike Bouchard sort of decide to put their support behind one of the other candidates? Uh, you know, I I don't. I mean, these are, these candidates have uh, all indicated they're in and they're in to win, and uh, I would expect that uh, we're going to see them all in on election day. Uh, Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard yesterday put out a press release in his support uh, that Michigan be a right-to-work state. And the press release, uh, they are given to hyperbole, as you know, but said that that could be a game-changer. That could deliver him the, the uh, primary election. Explain to everybody, if you would, what is uh, right-to-work status in the state of Michigan, and is that something that is even possible in a place that's been known for so long as a union bastion? Well, under the federal regulations that were set up, if the people of Michigan decide to make Michigan a right-to-work state, they can do so constitutionally through a referendum mm -hmm. or through initiative from the, from the legislature. It still has a vote of the people. And, and if that takes place, then we would become a state where workers who work for a company uh, get to choose whether they want to be a member of that union or not. They, it, being a member of union is not a condition of employment. And the right-to-work states in this country have shown higher growth and higher employment rates than the, the non-right-to-work states. Uh, it seems to be one of the factors that businesses make. Uh, they take it into account when they make a decision as to whether they're going to locate their business. So uh, there are a lot of people who believe that by becoming a right-to-work state, I think besides Affecting those business decisions, uh, you also would have an opportunity to change the image of Michigan, which is an image that uh, you, the unions are in control of the state. So that, that's, that's why it's such an inflammatory issue. So would that be done through a ballot proposal? It would be, have to be done through a ballot proposal. And, and given the fact that the unions are such a powerful lobby, and, and if they still are, I should ask you, really, uh, so influential in elections, wouldn't it stand to reason that a, that a ballot proposal uh, would easily lose with the union support against it? Well, not necessarily. I mean, the people of Michigan know that change is needed. And many of the polls that have been taken over the last few years show that a great majority of the people in Michigan think that we should have right to work, including union members who don't want to be forced to join a union. They, mm -hmm. they want to be able to, many of them believe in unions and want to be part of a union, but don't feel that they should be, uh, that should be a condition of employment. So uh, it would be a, a very, very contentious election, and there would be a lot of money spent on it, but uh, the outcome is unclear. Uh, speaking of unions, the Teamsters have backed a Congressman Pete Hoekstra, the Republican. They picked a Democratic a favorite, too. That was Speaker of the House, Andy Dillon. Is it unusual for a, a labor organization like the Teamsters to give a Republican endorsement? Well, pretty much so. They're the only one that really has of any significance, and uh, I mean, they, they obviously uh, made that choice, and uh, we'll, we'll see if others do, but so far none of the other major unions have, have backed a Republican in the primary. They have obviously taken choices between the two Democrat uh, opponents. Uh, Joe Schwartz, the former congressman known as a sort of a centrist, I guess, although he, he was a Republican when he was in the United States Congress, has decided to put his support behind Rick Snyder, the one tough nerd, the businessman. Uh, it is, uh, Joe Schwartz at one time fancied himself an independent candidate for governor. Is his endorsement valuable? Well, 
I mean, the question of endorsements is always out there of, of whether it, it persuades people to vote. Uh, I think most voters want to see what the issues are. They want to see who the candidates are and what they believe about those issues and then make their choices. Uh, I would expect that uh, someone who, uh, who uh, particularly is fond of or has a lot of respect for uh, an endorser would, mm -hmm. might be partially influenced by that endorsement, but uh, most people don't make their decision by endorsement alone. Let me ask you this, then. Speaking of endorsements, on the Democratic side, there is the same polling unit that says uh, Andy Dillon, the Speaker of the House right now, 34.3 percent versus his lone opponent, uh, Lansing Mayor Verge Bernero, with 25.1 percent. So 34.3 percent versus 25.1 percent. The winner right now in that Democratic primary, according to the poll, would be undecided, 39.5 percent. Do you think that the um, Democratic voters are truly undecided or apathetic about the choices? Well, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, there are a few undecided, but that's because they don't know who the candidates are, and that's because they're not paying any attention, because that's because they don't care. I mean, that seems what's going on. I mean, the, the amount of undecided in the in the Republican side is less than half as much, and there you've had a very vigorous campaign for a long time, and I, I truly believe people have gone back and forth. I mean, I think we, we pretty much know that there's some who had decided to go with a particular candidate that have moved into undecided as, as more and more information comes out and these positions get uh, known by, to the voters. But on the, the Democrat side, I think you're absolutely right. I, I, think that, uh, or I think that what we have is a circumstance where there's there's a lot of apathy, and therefore people haven't paid attention, and uh, that means they may not be going out to vote. It's going to be a very close election also. Mears is reporting that Lansing Mayor Verge Bernero said he wouldn't mind an endorsement from Governor Granholm, and he wouldn't mind one from President Obama. But it seems to me, right at the moment, those two uh, Democratic figures are not very popular. I mean, would, do, would you think that an endorsement from Governor Granholm would serve him well? Well, I mean, it's hard for me to speculate, but, I mean, the governor obviously has her followers and people who believe she's done a good job. There's still a, a, a small chunk of people who, who thinks that she's uh, done a good job. And as I said, I mean, it, it, it certainly helps influence, and especially in this kind of a circumstance uh, where you have where you, you have two candidates that are not much difference. I mean, the, the big difference between those two candidates on the Democrat side is, is the right-to-life issue. And... Uh, of course, when people find out that, that Andy Dillon is is strongly right to life and uh, and that Bonero is pro-choice, there's a, there's a big shift in in who they want to vote for on that side. They you know they shift over from Dillon to Bonero. Uh, that's what the polls have shown that too. I mean, I'm not I'm just telling you what I've, we've seen in, in polling that's been done. But uh, when you have undecideds and people who really don't know, then I think there's more of a tendency to look at somebody who you respect. And, there are, as I said, there are still a group of Democrats that were, uh, who have strong feelings for the president and for, um, and for the governor. Do you think that Sarah Palin, the uh, one-time uh, candidate for vice president, the one-time Alaska governor, might just dip her finger into Michigan here before the primary with some sort of endorsement? Are you hearing any rumblings about something like that? I, we really have heard nothing, and she hasn't been here in a while. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, she's done a whole series of endorsements. Mm -hmm. And uh, I so, think we've probably heard on the Republican side the last of the endorsements. But, you know, anything can happen in politics, as you well know. And, uh, well, it seems like it's close to the election. It's a long time away from a political point of view. I mean, there's a lot of votes still to be decided on both sides. And we're not going to know what those decisions are until people go to the polls. And a lot of people will change their mind the day before, the night of, or the morning of, uh, uh, of the uh, election. So... That's why this is such a, a, a nail-biter. Two weeks to go. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, just real quickly, in about 30 seconds, can you explain what the 10-in-10 uh, one in, uh, the 10, in 10 program that you have going on inside the Republican Party in Michigan? Well, we're talking with our volunteers and training our volunteers now. We have thousands of people who are really motivated to get involved in this election. And, I mean, I think that's... Uh, one of the things that we're seeing, which is a reflection of uh, enthusiasm on the Republican side, and the 10 and 10 is, is 10 ways that, that they can, uh, each individual who wants to volunteer can, can help us, uh, help Republicans win the election. Okay, it's MIGOP.org if you're interested in more information. And that